Hello there and welcome back to the White Horse Works. Today I'm going to tell you about one of the trials and tribulations of being a worker in Gage One. But first, let's just go to the office. Well, we're here in the office at the computer and you may remember video 116. And here we have a Class 08 handmade. I sent it off to the customer and I just got this email from him. And as you can see, it arrived damaged in the post. And of course Muggins here is responsible, isn't he? So here we are back in the workshop and here I have the parcel returned to me by the customer. And then a week later I get the transmitter, because he forgot to pack that one as well. Let's have a look and see what condition it's in. This is how it was sent to the customer by my Hermes. It's certainly come to me pretty well packed. A good friend of mine was offered this job by the customer and he refused. He said it would be too difficult. I wish I had refused as well. Yes. Certainly extremely well wrapped this time. Well, here she is, ready for radio test. Before I do anything with the loco, I always test to make sure that it's working. That all seems to be quite good. So all the radio's okay. We've just got to fix these terrible dents here and this split here. And all these loose springs here that are glued on with water. Well, I've done an examination of the loco. It would appear I have four jobs to do. There's to fix this crack here, to replace this that's completely broken away and is missing. It looks just like this as a fuel cover. I'll have to re-stick these back on. And of course the major job is going to be getting rid of this dent then it's all got to be repainted all over again. So first of all I think I'd better remove the body so I can do some body work. Four screws hold the body on. There's two here beside the speaker and then inside the cab there's another two there. Well I've just noticed the man's a little loose. Another job to do. Using my trusty padded tray, I'm going to remove the body. One screw there, and another screw beside it. There she comes out on the magnetic screwdriver. I could use a crook tweezer, and of course we keep the screws in a little container, and everything else that appertains to the locomotive is kept in a tray. We've done the screws in the cab, carefully turn it over and we'll do the two screws in front of the speaker. These are made of brass so uh, I can't use the magnetic screwdriver on them. And she comes apart. For ease of maintenance inside there are two plugs which we must unplug and now we can get easy access to the body. First job we'll do is the easiest. The driver is loose. On the underside there are two little 10BA screws so I've just got to tighten those and now he's nice and tight. That's good. To do this job I think it's going to be easier to remove the console with the driver on it 
that's the redoing of the crack that is so I'm just loosening the two screws and the console will come out with the console out it'll be easy for me to fix the body I always make things modular so it's easy to remove the cracks around here I think will be a simple fill job with body filler I'm gonna to have to make a new one for here but I think I'll tackle the hardest one first which is going to be this dent this whole panel has been pushed inwards with an almighty bang to have dented this very strong piece of metal you can see inside I'm gonna to have to bang here looking inside the bonnet there's a big ridge just there and here is a screw I'm gonna to have to cut that screw off and then with a piece of wood bop down on this ridge and hope that the whole darn thing doesn't fall to pieces so I've rounded off a piece of stick to match the curve of the roof now we'll go down inside and we'll see how much damage I'm going to cause as I try to straighten it support is going to be all important so I've got a piece of wood with a tissue and we'll rest the radiator on that remove my piece of wood let's give it a bop First of all, I'll just cut away the screw in there because it gets in the way. That's good. Now I'll take this piece of wood and very carefully mm -hmm. quite good not bad at all there's a few cracks in the paintwork here I'm gonna to have to deal with but I'll deal with that later I now need to make a replacement fuel cover like this one to match the one on the other side looks to me like this oval is a slab of brass about two and a half millimeters thick well, I've managed to find a piece of aluminium that's about the same thickness and I shall make it out of that. Lo and behold it's an old no smoking sign. Never throw away a good bit of scrap. So with a scrap of paper and a dirty finger I'm now going to do a little bit of brass rubbing by pressing on the paper it gives me the exact shape and size of the one I've got to make. I'm now going to transfer that to the aluminium. So I just cut out the shape of the piece of paper. There she blows. And just scribe the shape. Just fill up the scratches with dirt. And there's my semicircle ready for cutting. You could use a hacksaw, of course. <laughs> I'm going to use a bandsaw. Note how I have left it on a sprue so I can file it to shape. So now it's sort of filed to shape. Let me just break off the sprue and file away the knob. So there we are, there's a good match. That's going to go on there. But unlike this one, which is polished metal, I'll be scratching this deep and leaving the deep scratches on here. That way the glue will be able to have a good key. So one side of this will just key up really well. And this is what so many people forget when they stick things together with Aralite. You must have a good rough finish like that, both there and on here. You've got to scratch it deep to make it stick. And then it won't come off like this one did. 
Now this is essential equipment if you want to do any arrow dating. You've got to have nail varnish remover, earbuds, the arrow light of course, and a toothpick. You also need a small piece of card to do the mixing on, and a piece of tissue to keep your fingers absolutely clean. Or you'll have fingerprints all over your model. You only need the smallest of pinches to do this job. You only need the smallest amount of this stuff. It really spreads once it's put together. Put some on one surface, a very small amount on the other surface. And then when you put them together, push down, if you can see there it's squishing out. Now that leads a very nasty little, well not nasty, a bad meniscus there and we've got to get rid of that and that's when the the little earbud comes in. By pressing down firmly we can make the meniscus but even that's a bit messy so this is where the nail varnish comes in. Put a wee drop of varnish into the nail varnish remover into the cap and then come across to the model and just wipe it gently and it'll get rid of all the marks and you end up with a beautiful meniscus it looks just a ticket you can remove any bits of glue from your fingers with the nail varnish remover it dissolves the aerodite very nicely now we've got to put this to one side and we'll work on the chassis.